What's going on, everybody? Yo, excuse, listen, I know I look a little rough. Excuse that, excuse that. That's the, the quarantine special. Uh, what's up, everybody? Um, welcome so much. I mean, welcome you guys back to uh, my Saturday thing that I'm going to start doing called Conversations with uh, Carrie Too Smooth. Where I'm just, you know, we're just talking guitars. We're talking about life. Um, questions you may have about the industry. Questions you may have about gear. Um, some questions you may have about practice tips. I'm just here to kind of give you a little bit of insight and try to help you guys grow in your craft. What's up, what's up, Chino Hills in the building? So, um, I appreciate everyone that's on so far and those that are gonna be coming on, um, appreciate it. Any tips for practicing? Yes, any tips for practicing, I would tell you, whenever you're going to practice, focus on areas of weaknesses if you don't have to practice for anything specific. If chords are your areas of weakness, practice that. If you working on soloing is your areas of weakness, or you understanding the number system or theory or whatever, focus on those specific things. Um, and then time management, like looking at your time, realizing, okay, if I got to practice for a gig, if I have like a couple days um, and I've got seven songs to learn, like take maybe three or four songs a day. And then on the last day, put everything together. So that way you're like prepared when it's time to get ready to do this gig. All right, that's another question. All right, please tell me how that you get that sound. I says, I've been trying to duplicate it for two weeks and I haven't come close. It's here, it's in your hands. Uh, and it's the, it's the equipment that you use. So a lot of things that I'm doing is I'm really meticulous about massaging my amp and ensuring that my amp sounds right, right? Um, I have it set for a specific setting. So I, I go through, I'm like, okay, that doesn't sound right. And then I play for the room. So each guitar that I use is different. So I, I have to make the adjustments on my pedal board or if I use my Boss ME80, I'm making the adjustments on that so that way it sounds right. So I'm very meticulous about my sound. So you have to be the same level of intensity. I don't use anything else outside of reverb. If I'm not doing any kind of overdrive, I'm just using reverb. So I massage the room. Um, the reverb for the room. So I'm using usually using hall reverb. I don't like spring um, or anything like that. I'm, when I'm usually playing with reverb, I'm using hall reverb. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's good? What's good? Yo, old school with some new school rules. Yeah. All right. You're amazing. I watch all your stuff. Oh, love from Argentina, man. That's us. That's up. You guys are in the house. Um, How high would you prioritize um, theory as terms of items to practice? It's important to learn the number system. Um, that's like a universal music language. So I would definitely prioritize that if it's an area of weakness and you're like, you're not really strong in that particular area, make note cards, like really force yourself to sit down and really learn that. That's the stuff that's really gonna help you in the long run. If you're trying to play guitar at a certain level where you feel comfortable, where you have to start to learn a lot of songs, understanding the number system will make it easier for you whenever you have to chart out. And when I'm saying chart out, I'm not talking about you have to get the notation, but like, let's say if you got to make a random chart for a song, let's say it's a uh, song A, and then you got to learn song A through song G. Song A, you can put like, okay, what key it's in? Okay, the progression is four, six, three, one. All right, song B, the progression is. So understanding the number system and, and with the just general basic theory is going to help you like do, just be better at your craft, so. All right, let's go back. All right, P90s versus humbuckers. You should get both. I mean, if you gotta get one guitar, I would say, depending on what you're trying to do, I would say go humbuckers, because P90s are such a specific niche sound that I would not like, be, if that's my main guitar, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Um, but if I, you have the option to get both, then get both. But if you only have to get one, I would say get humbuckers first. Blessings from the UK. That's what's up. That's what's up. Do you know what, I, what it sounds like when you play guitar? Yeah, I know what it sounds like. I'm listening. I use my ears. I'm paying attention to like what it sounds like, what it feels like. So yeah, definitely. Bonjour from Montreal. Yo, what's up? What's up? I've been to Montreal. I love that place. Thanks for the live video. Which artist were you influenced by? Um, early in my career, I was influenced by a lot of D'Angelo. So... Uh, if you go back and listen to those Brown Sugar Records, the Voodoo album, um, that's that's a lot of my musical influence. Tony, 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 from back in the day, like they had that sound. Like I'm so I originated in church, so like anything that kind of gave me like that, 
that churchy kind of feel vibe with some R&B like, you know, sprinkled in there. That's what I like. All right. Um, huge fan. Awesome, awesome. Have you ever used the Digitech RP500 processor? I've never used it, so I can't, I can't, you know, speak on that because I've never used it. Big fan from Belgium. That's what's up. That's what's up. Boston Me 50. Um, is that your your got pedal? No, that's not my go-to. I use the Boss ME80. So whenever I'm doing majority of my videos, my lives, um, anything for YouTube for the most part, I'm using the Boss ME80. Um, most Instagram videos. Now, there are certain times that I'll bring in the Helix or I use my pedal board. Honestly, I don't like to switch out those things out. Most of my records that I'm sending people out, records that people ask me to play on, I'm using the Boss ME80. Unless they're asking for something specific that I cannot get out of that pedal, then I have to use whatever's you know necessary in order to get that sound. But nine times out of ten, my home setup, I don't want to break that up because it's just like it's monotonous. It's like it's annoying trying to get the right pedal, trying to make sure that the volume is the right. In, you know, it's just a whole lot of stuff that I really don't want to do. But if I had to do it, I would definitely do it. All right, some really good questions. All right, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, what's up? What's up? Listen. Y'all know y'all beat us up, but you know, we gonna, we gonna come back for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Much love for New Orleans. What's up? What's up? Will you give us something, some nuggets for Corona lockup plays? Uh, so if you're, if you're at home and this is the coronavirus going on, I would say this is the time to really work on your craft. You should be like, like every day, there's no excuse of why you can't work on your craft. You should be working on your craft. You should definitely be locking in. So when you come up out of this thing, whatever, you should be like a guitar monster. You know what I'm saying? You should have a better knowledge about something, especially areas that you're weak in. So when you come out and you start playing, people will be like, man, like we can tell you've been in the woodshed. That's what you want people to say when they hear you play. So this is a priming time, you know what I'm saying, for really getting all that stuff locked in. Love from Norway. What's up? Norway in the house. All right, P90s. All my guitars have 90s. Man, that's what's up. Listen, I got one guitar that has 90s. If you're looking for a good P90, man, I would say go to Lambertone. Lambertone's got this 190. I think it's called the Risotto. Um, I think uh, David Ryan Harris that plays with um, John Mayer, they got together and they built this P90. I have this P90 in my Jazz Master, and it's phenomenal. Like The responsiveness that it sounds like is great with overdrive. So if you got a whole bunch of P90s, man, you might want to, you know, one of your guitars that you just like, you want to try to test drive, I would definitely do that, man. Lambertone pickups. All right, one of the questions is, can you show us an example of learning the system? Listen, I can show you an example, but if you really want to learn and like for me to really just go through, I would say go to carryscamp.com. That's K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. And that way I have lessons that are specifically for learning the number system how you use note cards, everything. So that way you can just really break it down and I can show you and I can walk you through the process versus just giving you kind of like a condensed um, sample size. I wouldn't want to shortchange you like that. You know what I'm saying? All right, Montgomery the Gump in the house. What's up, what's up? I'm from Beham, you know what I mean? We love we love the Gump. Um, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. Looking to get a boss, um, 50. Um, I like the 50, but if you're going, if you're going to spend some money, man, you might as well go ahead and get the 80. I think the 80 is just like, it's a, it's a, it's the most complete to me. It allows you to do a lot more different sounds. It's got a lot of great presets. So I love the 50, you know what I'm saying? And I love the 82. Uh, let me see what else. What is your sleep schedule? <laughs> like when you're on tour, it just depends. So like usually, um, after a show, you have call time. Call time might be 3 in the morning, might be 12. And then usually like you're in the bunk the whole time, just sleeping in the bunk until you get to the next city. And then you get there and they'd be like, all right, load in is at such and such time. So you have something called Master Tours. And Master Tours is like an app on your phone that tells you specifically what the time frame is. So you try to plan your, you know, your sleep and whatever you're getting up and going to grab something to eat around that schedule. Let me see what else. We got some good stuff going on. What's your favorite type of guitar? My favorite type of guitar right now, um, the, way, the thing that's really kind of like grabbing my ears is any kind of Strat style guitar, HSS. That is my favorite con configuration um, of guitars. I have two. Um, both have Lambertone pickups in it. Um, the triple shots are the two single coils. And one, like for the bridge, one humbucker is the Crema, which I really love. And the other was the grinder, which I really love. They, they have both because I want both configurations. But yeah, that's my favorite setup for right now. 
Um, I have a lot of different types of guitars depending on what the gig calls for, but those are like my, some of my main go-tos. Greetings from Paris. What's up? Greetings from uh, St. Pete, Florida. What's up? What's up? All right, watching your videos, trying to find a few tips on YouTube. Basis aren't talked about. All right, so yeah, there are not a lot of um, YouTube channels that really... I'm trying to get some of my bass player friends to start doing some stuff. Um, I could teach you and I could tell you like what to do, like what notes, but like there's a certain kind of groove that a bass player has to have. The guitar players, we don't think the same way. Our stuff is, you know, we like to doodle. We like to kind of give it like, a, you know, uh, notes with inside of what's going on. Bass players, y'all y'all hold that pocket down. Y'all hold that foundation. Y'all can groove. I don't have that groove just yet. Like, I can do certain kind of styles, but we need to get more bass players definitely on YouTube that are giving lessons, that are giving nuggets, that are share, showing you exactly what they're doing that feel. So that way, like, you know, we can get some really dope bass players out in the world. All right. How would you go about getting... Um, Getting you to play on one of my tracks. If you want me to play on one of your tracks, email me at carrytoosmooth um, at gmail.com and then I'll let you know my rate and then we'll take it from there. How did you get your start in the musical industry? Um, I got my start in the musical industry. Um, I had to move from Birmingham, Alabama and I moved to LA. But prior to that, I did um, a showcase, not even a showcase, I played at BET Music Matters, um, and then I had a lot of people when I was doing soundcheck, but like, man, where you from? Where you from? You sound great. And I was like, I'm from Alabama. And they told me like, man, if you ever move out to LA, I'm sorry, we, we got people in here that's just uh, rattling bags and stuff, you know what I'm saying? The quarantine is real. Um, and once I was in soundcheck, they was like, man, if you ever move to LA, you'll never stop working. So I went back to Birmingham, Saved my money for a year, got with some guys, and we we decided to drive out here. When I moved out here, I was doing all of the jam sessions, trying to network, letting guys know if you ever go on tour, I'll be your your backup, your feeling while you're at church, everything. Um, and I constantly playing, constantly playing, constantly networking. And as even though people like knew who I was, I still had to let people know that I had moved to the city. And it was a lot of grind and a lot of hard work. And then it became like a conversation. Somebody was like, "Yo, what are you doing um, next Thursday?" And I was like, man, I'm not doing nothing. And I was like my first big call to go out with Tyrese. So the thing is, like, once you get here, you like when you, whatever city you're at, whatever you're doing, you have to network. You have to let people see you play. And I use every opportunity as marketing. It didn't matter if it was a small coffee shop, if it was at a bigger venue, whatever. I use every opportunity to play like if I was playing in front of thousands. And I use that footage. Those pictures, everything is marketing because you're your own PR firm. You got to do everything for yourself until you're at a point where you can hire people. That's what I did in order to get on. I'm 35 year old. Is it too old to get serious about my plan? Nah. Honestly, if you see all this gray in my beard, man, like I'm considered like technically I'm like an old head in the grain, but like I'm one of the first calls for a lot of different situations. So it's never too late to get started, man. Like music has no expiration date. You know what I'm saying? As far as who's playing it, that has no expiration date. What's the job perspective now compared to then? What's the job perspective now compared to then in LA? Um, honestly, the way it rolls right now, well, I mean, outside of the whole COVID-19 situation, but before then, like now everything's relationship based. So if you don't have relationships with guys, you may not get the calls. There are some auditions that were going on, but it's really about the relationships. You have to build those relationships. Either you're here, you're not here. I've seen guys get flown in you know, because they've had relationships with some of the musical directors that are in charge. They have a connection. You know, you want to try to make as connection. If y'all from the same city, bro, like let that be like the, 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 you know, the point that binds you guys together. I've seen guys that come in from Detroit. One of the main, you know, musical directors is like got ties to Detroit. So he brings in a lot of guys that are from Detroit. Like if you're from certain areas, Chicago is one of a big city. Memphis is another big city that, that has a lot of influence out here. Making those connections, man, like building those relationships. It's all about relationships. At the end of the day, anybody can play anything. But if you're not a good people person, we don't have any kind of relationship, no ties or whatever, then I may you may not be the call, regardless of how talented you are. So it's about just building those relationships. It's never too late. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Let me see what else we got soon. What's your first gig with a with a famous artist? Uh, it depends. So like if you're from the South, 
Um, Calvin Richardson was like one of the big guys from the South. Now, one of my mainstream artists is that every, I could just say their name and everybody knew who it was, was Tyrese. One of my even bigger artists that I played for was Jason Derulo. I played with Derulo for a very long time. R&B side was Lettucey. I've done stuff with Michelle Williams. I've worked with Tori Kelly. Um, done stuff with the Black Eyed Peas. I've done stuff with Keanu Lede, who I'm out with right now. Like there's, the thing about it is it's like, huh? Two Chains. Two Chains. I've done stuff with Ty Dolla Sign. It's just about once you get out here and you start getting connected and people start seeing they realize your work ethic and how good of a person that you are and how you know the music. It, like you, you're able to kind of network and work in different kind of venues. Let me go back and see some of these questions that I missed. Can you add tour dates to the Carrie's Camp website? Right, right now, ain't nobody going on tour, bro. Like, I love y'all, and I, I'm sorry about missing. Like, I'll definitely add them, but like right now, ain't nobody doing nothing. It's ice cold for everybody. Um, I don't even anticipate nothing happening this year. You know, all of us have gotten like a lot of friends, friends of mine that I've talked to. You know, we got everything's been postponed or either canceled, but even the postponed stuff, I don't know. It don't even sound the way that everything's going right now. Things are going to pop, so that's why I said like. Everybody should be coming out like super, super sharp when all this stuff is all over with. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be like super sharp on their craft. You know what I mean? So, Korea, what's up? What's up? Awesome, awesome. Let me go back and read some more of these questions. You guys got some good stuff, some good feedback that's going on. What's your best guitar amp? So if I can choose, like my personal preference is the Bad Cat Lynx 50. Hands down, Bad Cat makes some of the best amps that I've ever played. And I'm one of those guys, now that I've been doing this for a long time, I don't really want to go through every single knob on my amp. I like to, you know, if I got a tone knob and I can switch it back and forth, it's super easy. That's one of the reasons why I love the Lynx. It shows up every night. It doesn't matter if I play clean, if I play overdrive. It's going to show up. Now, if the Bad Cat Lynx is not available, then my next go-to would probably be a Mesa Boogie Longstar. Like, that's a great amp. Only thing that I do not like about it is just like when I'm at Soundcheck trying to dial it in and like, you know, that is monotonous, but it's just part of what you got to do. And then from there, then I go to my Fender um, DeVille with the 410s in it. And then from there, like, I try not to go be like before that, like, most back lines, I mean, if I get a twin, it's probably been beat up. It's not really one of my go-tos. I used to be Fender twin all day, but you got to make sure it's in pristine condition. Um, if I'm doing a pop gig, then I'm doing the Mesa Boogie um, Rectifier. That's or the Marshall JCM 800. I got to have something big that can carry the sound that I need to carry. So those are my go-to amps. All right. Did you have a lot of support when you started playing? No, <laughs> I did not. This one thing that I want to let you guys know about when it comes to you playing guitar and you being a creative, it's a long, uh, like long journey, and it's also like a journey where you're like you're lonely. So you have to have strong will and strong discipline and realize that everybody's not going to support you. It's one of those things. Is like people got to see it first or they start believing it, right? So I used to tell people all the time. I used to try to convince them, like, "Yo, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this," and I'm wasting my time and I'm spending a lot of energy trying to convince people. Then I just started being like, you know what? I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. And the proof was in the pudding. I started putting that energy into me, like showing people like, I'm just going to be diligent with my craft. Right now, I may not be playing for somebody, but I know I'm going to bet on myself. This is what I'm going to do. And when those things started to happen, people were like, oh man, yo, you got some skills. You got da, 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 da. So things happen with time. Don't spend your time and you waste your time trying to convince folks. Like if this is your dream and this is your passion, this is what you want to do. Don't waste that time trying to convince them. Like, yo, just put the put the work in. They're gonna see it. Trust is gonna happen. They're gonna see the work, and they'll probably be the ones that let you know. Like, yo, I seen you when you was in TV, man. I saw you was on TV. I mean, I saw this this one thing you was doing on, on this website or whatever. I seen you performing at such and such. They'll be able to tell you exactly what you're doing. So don't expend the energy trying to convince them this is what you want to do. Like, just put the work in, and then they'll see it. Oh, man, I miss y'all at Plum Bar, man. If you're ever in Birmingham, Alabama, man, go to the Plum Bar, man. Like, I miss performing there. It was one of, like, the great stomping grounds, man. Um, once it, everything, you know, all this stuff blows over, of course. But you know what I'm saying? Because we're practicing social distancing. Let me be the first one to say that. Um, so we're practicing social distancing. Also, let me make this disclaimer. Um, if you are 18 to age and you're younger, please ask your parents 
before you go to carry too small. I mean, carry carries camp.com. I don't want to, you know, my whole thing is to make sure that number one, that we're like, we're complying with all of the rules. I don't want to just tell you guys to go to a website. And if you're too, too young that you haven't asked your parents, get the, get the permission, get the okay from them first before you go to the website. So if you're 18 years and you're younger, like ask your parents before you go to the website. I definitely want you to, you know, be a part of the community, but I don't want to like push that on you. And you just decide to do that. I want to follow the rules and the rules are that if you're 18 years or younger, you need to ask your parents first before you decide to go to the website to become a member of Carrie's Camp. All right, let's go back and see some of these questions. Have you ever done a live stream jam session? Yeah, I've done a lot of those collab jam sessions. Um, I've considered to do a lot of them, but right now my focus is really people that are in my community that I want to give them the nuggets, especially during this time where people are like, they have time off, they want to learn. So my focus is really to just give them all of the resources that I have. You know, it's cool to do collabs and that's really fun. But the benefit of it is like, you know, people enjoy it. But I, I'm really so focused on building this community and ensuring that my students get the cream of the crop. I want to show them how to play. And that's what my focus has really become over these last few years. Thank you for taking time to speak to us. You got a new... Oh, man. Welcome to the camp, yo. Welcome to the camp, Hakeem. Welcome to the camp, man. Um... If I'm a trombone player, what's the music scene like in LA for horn players, in your personal opinion? There, I mean, honestly, what I would do if you're looking to, for like work in the music scene as a horn player, I would connect with other horn players that are here. Horns are definitely needed. I don't see that, you know, right now, a lot of artists don't have the budgets to necessarily like pay horn players to like go out on tour. But what you could do is, a lot of times they need horns in the records so they can pay you to like put stuff in the box. So like you never know with the connections like you, I would find other horn players that are here, like get connected into the scene, be like, yo, if you know an artist that may not be able to afford to take us out, but they need horns on the records, let's pay, you know, let them pay for that. Like let them do that. That's the kind of thing that I would necessarily do. In ears or not. Yeah, man, at this level, you gotta have in ears. Nobody's doing monitors on stage. Like if you're playing for professional artists, Nobody's doing that. Even most of your churches now are starting to convert to having in-ears because they realize how loud it is and they want to try to keep everything quiet. So I would say invest in some in-ear monitors. Um, if you're looking like, you know, for cost effective situations, I would stay away from the stuff that's at Guitar Center. I, I get it. I would look at a company called Me Audio. That's M. Let me see if I got some stuff down here. It's M-E-E -E Audio, right? So I'll let you guys look at it. This is a free plug for me. Um, I'm endorsed with them. I have a lot of different in-ear companies that I work with, but Me Audio, I wanted to work with a company for, for guys who are up and coming in the game that don't have a lot of money, but they want great product. And Me Audio definitely has great products. Um, this particular model right here is, they do like a silicone base. Most of your in-ears are acrylic, right? So it gives you like ear fatigue. These are like, Silicone based, so it's like, you know, it's movable. So when you put it in your ears, it's not like, you know, making your ears um, ache over a period of time. Because you might be on stage for a long period of time or sound check or whatever. You don't want something that's going to make your ears ache. So I would definitely invest in getting some in-ears. You can, That's something that you're going to have to have if you're trying to play at this level. You want to go and make the investment now. Now, there are a lot of great companies out there. I, I've been endorsed with JH Audio. I've been, I'm endorsed with right now with Empire Ears. Empire Ears makes some of one of the best products, in my opinion, but it's it's kind of costly. You know, it's going you're gonna have to make that investment. If you're not willing to pay that much money, I would go with a company like Me Audio. They have some great stuff. They have a lot of drivers, a lot of different options, and these are like um, these are not even quads. I think I got three drivers in it, but it knocks like it's got quads or it's like it's got eight drivers. It just knocks really hard. So it just depends on what you want, what you're looking for. I would definitely say do your homework in getting in ears. What other stuff? Roll Tide, Paul. Roll Tide. Um, Carrie, as an R&B player, what should I be focused on other than the major key and the relative minor? There's a lot of things, man. There's a lot of things. If you're an R&B player, there's a lot of things. You, you want to work on arpeggiation. You want to work on the fluidity of how you put the chords together. You want to learn work on like your riffs in between. You want to work on your feel. You want to work on your timing. There's a lot of things to really be focused on if you want to be an R&B player. Because if your timing is horrible nobody is going to call you. If you cannot transition between chords smoothly, 
nobody is going to call you. If you're sounding your overall tone is crap, then nobody's going to call you. So there's a lot of different nuances that you can be working on to ensure that you're like solid. You know, there's a lot of things that you want to work on, but you can do it. This is the time to really like where, where everything is quiet. Nobody's really going anywhere. Nobody's doing anything to set aside practice time to really lock in and get your stuff like really nice. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would do. I mean, sure does make some great stuff, but I'm telling you at the level that I'm at and a lot of stuff that I play with, sure stuff is way more expensive, is way more pricey than what you should be paying if you're just beginning to get in there stuff. And yeah, they may have good warranties, but I'm the, the quality of the equipment, I'm telling you personal experience. I'm not just giving you some random fluff, fluff, whatever. I've been doing this for years. I play with like some of the industry's best and I've seen some of the guys who are on stage who complain about like, oh man, my ears went out. I need some generics. And it's just not, it does not work. So I'm telling you for companies that I, I'm never going to tell you about a company that I don't believe in their brand that I haven't used their stuff. So I'm telling you stuff that I've seen, that I've experienced stuff that I've watched other guys struggle with for years. And sure, because it's convenient, it's right and it's available, it does not make the best equipment for the amount of money that it costs. Oh man, appreciate it, Derek. Appreciate it, Derek. Appreciate it. Let's go back through and see some more stuff. All right, all right, all right, all right. From Alabama, 56, and I started um, the drinks, and my son is a producer, trap music mainly. I play on the tracks to keep the motivation up. I'm a Carrie's camp member. That's what's up, Kevin. That's what's up, man. Roll Tide. Never too late to live the dream. That's very true. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, having trouble with palm muting. What's a way to get that technique? Um, down. So if you're having trouble with palm muting and this is like your strum hand, I would rest it on the bridge. Don't push down hard. Just rest it barely on the bridge and work on like your strum, like working on chords, working on licks. It's one of those things that you, that's one of the areas that I would focus in on for, for practicing, putting your hands there to ensure that, you know, it's, it's good. You can't get past the, the art of working on your craft. And that's part of what you have to do to work on your craft. All right. All right, let's see. We got some more questions at the bottom. What was your goal as a musician? What is your goal as a musician at this point in your career? All right, so at this particular point in my career, my my goal and the, everything that I'm aspiring to do right now is to teach the next generation. Like my goal is to make sure that the next people coming up, they that they have the tools that they need to have. And honestly, I want to become like one of those guitar influences in people's playing. Like you know how people are like, oh man, Jimi Hendrix is one of my guitar influences. Or you know, I love John Mayer. Or I love you know whatever it is. I want to be one of those names. Oh, I love Carrie Two Smooth. So my goal now is to really work to become one of those. I've played for a lot of the the artists that I've always wanted to work with. I've gotten major placements. I've gotten record placements. So all of that stuff I've done. Now I'm in the point where I want to pass the torch to the next generation and ensure that the guys coming up, guys and girls coming up, that they have the tools. And I want to build my own entity, which I've been working on, which is Carrie's Camp. I, I keep talking about that. But that's my main goal. That's my main focus is just to teach, to instruct, to equip the next generation and become one of those household names. Whenever people play, they'll be like, oh, man, you sound like I would be like, you know, I would love it for them to be like, oh, man, you sound like Carrie Too Smooth. Yes, that's what I want to do. So that's what I'm working towards this next phase of my career. That's a good question. I'm here from Birmingham, UK. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Um, probably the wrong end of, of age and audience, but learning so much. Man, I, honestly, there's no wrong age to start or to learn or to become influenced in music. Like music is one of those things. There is no expiration date on how old you or how young you got to be in order to start playing. Like it's if you can play, you can play and everybody will respect it. Everybody will love it. People are going to be drawn to it. It's just one of those great things. So there's no expiration date. I tell people all the time. Let me see. Uh, 
What's a, a scale to start when you're a beginner? The major scale, learn the major scale. It's, it's super important, like learn that major scale. And then from there, you wanna start learning the number system, pair it up with the major scale so you can understand like what numbers correlate with the major scale. That's what I would do. What is the first R&B song you ever played? Uh, maybe Get Gone by Ideal. That was probably like the first one where I heard the guitar and I was like, oh, this is different. Like, I, I want to try to figure out what they're doing. Like, that probably was the first one when I heard that song. I wanted, because it, it has this little riff. Dun, 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 dun. That riff right there got me. I was like, yo, that's 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 kind of funky, man. I want to learn how to do that. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, Ideal by Get Gone was probably like one of my first R&B songs that I ever played. What was the first skill that you learned initially that seemed impossible. My first skill that I learned being in church, I learned how to solo. And my soloing wasn't strong, but I learned how to solo. And I used to only solo on one string, which was the E string, which was like super, super hard. But my ear, so I would say my ear and my soloing were like the first two things that I really worked on. And then over the time, I started realizing that, oh, I need to figure out what I'm doing so I can know what I'm doing, just guessing. So I started to learn my keys. So like by learning my scales, learning my keys, working on solo. So all that stuff kind of got fused together. I was one of those guys that was kind of thrown in the fire when I was playing at church because a guitar player at church um, left the church and they needed somebody else to fill that role. So it's like I got kind of shoved in there. So it was like on the job training. So I had to figure it out. All right. Um, were you playing a good mile? While you were in the army, yes, I was playing a good man. I played like my roommates, some of my old army roommates, they've even told my wife this, like, yo, Carrie used to play every single day. And mind you, I was not good, but it was just, I was consistent. That's one thing about guitar. You don't have to be good when you first start, but you gotta be consistent. You gotta spend time with that instrument. You gotta learn to, what it can do, what it can't do. You gotta, you gotta spend time with that instrument. So some of my first army roommates, man, like guys that I've known since I was the age of 17, I'm 38 now, about to be 39, like later on this year. They will tell you, like, yo, Carrie had his guitar every day. Even when I was deployed to Iraq, I got a guitar shipped out to me and I was playing like on my off times. Like those things made a huge difference for me. Like, so I'm telling you, like, you can never um, you know, never take never not take advantage of the time that you got. Would you pick a good acoustic guitar or electric? No, I would not. It just depends on where I'm at. So like if I was deployed, like Honestly, when I first got to Iraq, I went to Iraq when it first started. There was no power. So an acoustic guitar for me was better because I had to worry about trying to plug it in and do all this other stuff. I could just take it everywhere. I like both. It just depends on the preference. Now, if I'm teaching in a setting where there's no power, then I'm going to teach electric. I mean, I'm going to teach acoustic. But if I can choose, I'm probably going to choose electric because for me, I love the way electric guitar can sound. I love the things that I can do, especially with the guitars that I have. I've learned those guitars in and out. Let's see what, whatever. Um, that was a good question. Oh, love from Paris, man. Appreciate it. Love from Paris. What if you are a bass player switching to guitar? It's easy. I actually, I started out on bass. Bass was my first instrument. When I said I got shoved into the fire, I was at this church. I was playing. I was probably like 11, 12 playing. And I switched from bass guitar, so it helped give me like a general idea of like where certain notes were. So if they were like go to A, I knew I was in the key of A. So like it gave me kind of like a general rule of where I was, and I knew how I was supposed to feel for certain things. So like it made it easier for my approach for playing the guitar. I'm an intermediate player, and I'm learning the style of rock, but I'm starting to get drawn towards R&B and jazz, definitely towards R&B. I feel like I'm losing interest in learning rock music. Well, welcome to the fold. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the fold. If that's what you are, like we we got wide open arms. There's enough space for everybody if they want to play R&B. Love from Montreal, Canada. What's up? What's up? Hey. Um, hey, Carrie, I live in LA. I've been there for six years. Um, Jimi Hendrix is a major influence. I said, I love blues and I'm into R&B. Where are some places for beginners to meet up and to jam. So once all of this dissipates, there's a, um, a jam session that happens at the study in Hollywood on Mondays and Tuesdays. There's the Federal in North Hollywood. And I'm sure if you're like on social media and you're just whatever, 
you're going to run into people or you're going to hear about different kind of musical events that are going on um, music wise. You know what I'm saying? Funk and rock enthusiasts here. What's up? What's up? Love from Germany. What's up? What's a good DI box for someone just starting to perform? What's a good DI box? I honestly like it just depends if that you're just a solid acoustic player. I know there's a lot of different kind of acoustic DIs that you can use, but if you're just like you're doing a one off, man, I just tell them like on the back line, you just need a DI. I wouldn't even worry about that. Like the skill level I would use just let it be in my hands. I wouldn't even worry about the DI. All right, well, I'm going to get ready to sign out, man. I love you guys so much. Thanks so much for being a part of um, the live. I'm going to do this every Saturday. That's my thing that I'm going to do, conversations um, with me. And we can talk about, like I said, stuff in the industry. We talk about gear. We can talk about guitar. If you want to talk about, like, football, I don't care, man. We can talk about whatever. Uh, thank you guys so much for being a part. You could have really been doing anything this Saturday, but you guys decided to jump in, hop in, and say, what's up? All right, Ray, you got one more question, man. Come on, Ray. Come on, Ray. This is This is for Ray. Come on. Make it a good one, because if it ain't good, it's on Ray. You know what I'm saying? Ray, we waiting on you. You got about... Okay, there you go. What do you do <laughs> for weight loss? Work out, bro. You got to work out, man. You got to work out. You got to work out, and you got to eat right. Those are the things. Like, for me, um, my wife and I, we've become pescatarian. Like, we've done vegan diets. We've done all types of various things. But, like, you got to find out what works for you. You got to be consistent in going to the gym. You got to work out. You got to eat to live, not live to eat. That's one thing I worked on and, and learned. All right, that's it for this week. Love you guys. Same time, same bat channel, nine o'clock, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and I'll see you guys next Saturday. Love, peace, and hair grease. All right, peace.